third eye vision. Okay. Hey, I'm Mike. That's my cousin Anthony. Welcome to the third eye vision. We're going to get it popping for you. Keep it moving. <laughs> That's right, we're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Welcome to Third Eye Visions, where we motivate the blind, stimulate your mind, and welcome all kind. Topic of the day, still looking on the bright side while blind. Y'all, sometimes I run into blind people and people who have other impairments, and they have a bit of negativity about themselves. But today, this is not the case, especially with my man Adam, who's been blind since birth and still has a positive outlook and that's why i want to bring him on to show y'all that things are not always so negative but before we get into his story please subscribe stay subscribed hit the notification bell so that you can get updates on subjects that are newsworthy that are very important comment like and after you've done all that please share so now that I've gotten that out of the way, Adam, welcome to Third Eye Visions. What's good? What's good, man? Oh, man, I'm hanging in there. I'm a little sore. Uh, my arm is hurting for, for whatever reason, but that's not the reason why we are here. I just thought I'd let people know so they can feel sorry for me. And I just plan. <laughs> it's still oh, looking. Man, well, hopefully, hopefully your arm, your pain in your arm, man, will go away, bro. <laughs> okay, hopefully after this positive interview. Uh, there will should not be any more pain. Uh, still looking on the bright side while blind. Tell me first of all, before we get into that 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 positive vibe that you do have, tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of how you lost your sight. Well, actually, I uh, weighed one pound and seven ounces when I was born. I had a total of eighteen surgeries done on both eyes. And I have an eye condition called retinopathy prematurity. That means that my retinas weren't, uh, my retina of my eyes weren't uh, fully developed. So I had cataract surgeries and many, many other surgeries. My parents went through a lot with me, especially my mom while my father was working. Uh, I was, my mom went through a de uh, depression stage because, of course, you know, when you have a baby who's blind, you just don't know. How to how to how to how to handle the situation? You know, you you go through rough times and rough moments, and you know, luckily, she uh, pulled through. And hey, bam, we're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. So, <clears throat> with uh, in your thirty years of, of of being blind, have you ever once felt depressed or uh, or, or or down at nope. any time? Never. Tell us why. Tell the people why. Tell me why. Um, what what kept you positive and what kept you still looking on the bright side, you know, while being blind? I just don't think negative. I always think positive. Uh, if I have any problems, I, I talk to friends about it. I, you know, ask friends for advice and I tell them what's what's going on and they help me out with uh, what I'm going through. Okay. So w w during those times uh, of you know, growing up while while you were visually impaired. Tell us, what, what did you do? I mean, how involved were you in activities and things of that nature, which kept you busy? Um, You know, what kept me busy was, uh, you know, I, I like to play around with my, my cousins when I was a kid. When I was small, I would run around the back, the back of the house and just have a blast, man. Uh, nowadays, you know, I don't do that no more because, well, of course, we're all grown. But, you know, we are sometimes... I go to my aunt's house and they like to run around with me and play hide and seek and whatnot. And, you know, I go along with it and, you know, whatever. So, you know, I still I still act like a kid at 30 years old, you know? <laughs> I understand that. So that definitely you were involved with, you know, with, with, with your cousins and whatnot as they played uh, activities and, and did things like, you know, hide, go seek and just whatever you, you know, you they were involved in, you were involved in as well. So they included yep. you, right? That's a good yep. thing. That kept you going and it made you realize that regardless of you being visually impaired or totally blind, you still 
was a part of uh, quote unquote life, right? Mm -hmm. What about the schooling? Tell us about the school that you had gone to and what did you learn and how did it help you uh, further your, your, your path on? Uh, I went to the school for the blind up in Austin from 2000 to 2003. I attended summer camps. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't teach me what I uh, what we were expecting that I was going to learn. So due to my lack of education, I, I didn't go to college. Uh, unfortunately, due to my lack of education, uh, they were mostly teaching me how to become more independently than what they were supposed to be teaching me in class. And this doesn't go uh, this doesn't go not just for me. It goes for anyone who was who was there when I was there. Uh, I don't know if things have changed since then, but. Uh, when I left the uh, school for the blind up in Austin, I came to uh, public school. I did uh, middle school, uh, and I learned a lot from middle school all the way through high school. Uh, we had a lot of struggles, a lot of struggles with uh, teachers, uh, especially my, my father who fighted and fighted and fighted for me to get a one-on-one -on -one teacher to teach me the stuff that I had to get teach like everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, you know, I was, in, uh, so with that, I had, uh, someone always helping me. Uh, my work was never done, uh, my work was never done in Braille for me. There was always excuses and, you know, they gave me the run around. So that was a lot of, a lot of back, back, uh, bad education for me. It wasn't the best. So, you know, but, you know, I did what I did and graduated and I'm happy and proud. Mm, okay yeah sometimes you have to go through adversity in, in order to get where you need to be at correct yep yeah you you, you what you got to do is you got to fight and fight and fight until you annoy the living heck out of them until they listen to you that's what and you got to do and that's the and, same that you have to do that though yeah and, and that's what i had to do mm -hmm. uh several times uh from middle school uh you know classes weren't uh you know they weren't doing the right uh teaching for me so I had to step in or my mom had to step in or my dad had to step in so i would tell them look either you want to hear from my mom <laughs> or you want to hear from the, the 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 big the big man so whichever right. you prefer that's what you're gonna hear from i mean my mom has a a kind heart you know my mom can put up so much mm -hmm. but when it becomes to my dad uh, as far as education oh, oh get ready because the monster is showing up and he's about to explode so i, I, I would always give them i would always give them the ultimatum i'm like okay you want to hear it from a mom from the nice person or you want to hear it from the devil my dad <laughs> mm -hmm. okay well so, you know for those who are just joining us uh we are talking well i am talking on the wasi uh we talking to adam and uh, he's telling us how he's still looking on the bright side while uh blind uh, you mentioned earlier a few things that kept you in the positive mode. Uh, give give some more examples of what uh, what kept you upbeat uh, as a blind person. I mean that that you, you say that you never felt sorry for yourself or depressed. So for, for people who may be going through similar situations, what can you say to them to keep them on an upbeat path to realize that being blind is not the end all to beat all. <laughs> Uh, just listen to music, hang out with the dots, with your family members, you know, talk to them, let them know what you're experiencing. I mean, like I mentioned, I, I never experienced uh, any depression or whatnot. So, you know, I, I, I was raised by adults. I was raised by all my family, my aunts and uncles. I was mm -hmm. never raised by children. Uh, yet I would play with my cousins, but that's the only people who I was around with. So I was raised in a very, very 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 well uh family members okay so basically just staying involved staying involved you know the more more you get become involved with with with, with your family and just activities <clears throat> won't allow you to sit and just twiddle your thumbs and think about you being uh um, right being, okay that, that makes sense so are you considered to be an independent person working towards independence or you need you know, you, 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 you don't have any independent skills or what would you consider yourself uh, at when it comes to mobility? And, and oh, training? I have a lot of a lot of independent <laughs> skills, but uh, due to the fact where I live down here in the Rio Grande Valley, we don't have transportation for the blind. Uh, you know, since all of our towns are all right next to each other, mm -hmm. they don't, they, they don't, there's no city buses that I can use. 
uh, so I have to rely on family to get me places. Yeah, we got taxis and Ubers, but they're going to charge us up the behind, which, mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. so. Well, you are, so you are considered an independent person in that you can cook, you can clean, you can do what, you know. Every, I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can clean, I can, except I don't know how to use a stove, but I definitely know how to use a microwave and toaster oven, but not a stove. Okay. Well, you make it happen one way or another. You, you know, oh, you, yeah. Okay. What are some of your goals, Adam? Uh, so my goals is, uh, you know, staying positive, staying happy, uh, becoming a radio personality. I love radio, love music. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk yeah. to talk to people and just enjoy life, man. And as far as working to become a radio personality, what steps have you taken in order to uh, at least start on that path to become? Well, a uh, I'm planning on, on, on working on heading out to this huge uh, radio conference taking place in uh, Burbank, California, that uh, was supposed to go down in March, but it got postponed due to the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting for COVID-19 to go away to hop on the plane and head on to Burbank, California. Okay, I wish you the best in uh, uh, in, in that endeavor. Are there any personalities that you kind of like mimic or look after? Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez, lots of them. <laughs> okay. You want to name any of them or just... Oh, man. Uh, Chad when... Erickson. Uh, uh, just a, a, a whole ton. Okay. Well, I, I, I like the fact that you are not afraid and you're a go-getter and you haven't, again, let anything uh, uh, deter you from doing what you want to do. And that's what I'm talking about. I just want to bring you on to, to, to show people that, you know, people accept their, their challenge uh, situation and move forward. And that's what's important to me as well as others. What's uh, next for you as far as, uh, you know, after you've achieved the, the goal of becoming a personality, anything else or is that just one of your... Uh, that's Maybe. one of my biggest dreams I've been I always wanted to do ever since I was a kid. Okay. Now, are, is there any type of advice that you want to give anyone, again, who may be uh, a bit timid, who may be feeling a bit uh, down or depressed, the fact that they are not only just visually impaired, but have other impairments as well? Give them something positive that you've obtained. You don't give up. Just think positive. Think happy. And... You know, if anyone needs to chat, hey, I'm here. Feel free. Hit me up. Comment, message me, whatever. Comment and message me are the best two ways to get a hold of me. Okay, well, tell them how they can get in touch with you. Uh, well, they can get in touch with me by uh, on uh, Facebook. Uh, well, geez, I don't remember my Facebook username. My bad. Uh, but if, if anybody has Skype, you can get a hold of me on Skype. My uh, Skype username is DJ Adam in my last name which is A-L-E-M-A-N. It's all together, by the way. There's no there's no spaces. So it's DJ Adam, then my last name, which is A-L-E-M-A-N. I do got a Facebook, but I don't remember my Facebook username, so I, I don't want to mess that up. I'll just put that in the comp, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, description. So if anybody's looking for somebody to talk to, if you're feeling a bit, you know, uh, down if you're feeling that you know the world is over because you are impaired y'all definitely get in touch with adam he will talk he loves to talk he plans to be a radio personality and i wish him the best luck and i know that he's gonna do very well because I like his personality loves to talk and engage with with people so with that being said adam i really 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 I want to thank you for coming on third eye visions where again we motivate the blind stimulate your mind and welcome all kind and that means all kinds so with that being said you want to show you want to close the show up with your you, uh, with your signature radio voice thank you so much man much appreciated and this is the third eye visions with your host anthony parker and adam <laughs>